Good evening, everybody. I'm um, going to very quickly summarise three separate articles um, which are all to do with one uh, person in particular, um, somebody from Roslindale, that's in Suffolk County, in Boston, his name Frederick Clay. Now, in 1979, he was, well, first of all, he was arrested at the age of 16. Um, <clears throat> back in 1979, he was sentenced to life in prison for a uh, the murder of a cab driver called Jeffrey Boyajian. I hope I've pronounced that right. Um, he was only 16 at the time. He refused the plea deal because he's protested his innocence. Um, there were two eyewitnesses. Now, back in August 2017, this is coming back to the first of the three articles, at the age of 53, his murder conviction was vacated. Obviously, he had spent 38 years in prison, but encouraged by not only his own lawyers, but also fellow inmates. Um, he kept going. Um, he said, quote, never give up. You might lose some issues along the way, but you've got to maintain who you are and never play politics with the truth. Stick to the truth. Um, his attorney, Lisa Kavanagh, pointed out that it was a witness. There were witnesses that identified Clay, this after being put into hypnosis. And obviously it's, again, hip, this idea of putting somebody into hypnosis, again, is being debunked as junk science. You know, quote, she said that there were problems not only with the circumstances that these witnesses made their initial observations and also the way that the police handled the identification procedure. So uh, David Conley of the Suffolk, the Suffolk District Attorney reinvestigated the case via its own criminal cr um, conviction integrity unit. And as we've seen sometimes, you know, these DAs, they, they do look after one another, don't they? You know, unlike uh, Mike Griesbach. They do look after one another. Um, he said that, you know, he doesn't know if Frederick Clay is innocent or not, but agreed that he did not receive a fair trial. Now, the victim, Jeffrey Boyajian, his younger brother, Jerry, he is quoted as saying that his, him and his family only ever want justice. And quote, I feel that justice is, uh, you know, is, is needed, required, and uh, for both Mr. Clay, Frederick Clay, and his brother. And that there is no point continuing to have Mr. Clay in prison. That was the words whence uh, Mr. Clay was released. Now then, moving on to an article to do with the same case, January, 2019. Now, we've now got Frederick, abbreviated to Fred Clay, but Again, wrongfully convicted of murder, and in this article, will receive one million dollars settlement from the state, which is the maximum under state law. And one of his other attorneys, Jeffrey Harris, pointed out that this was a great day for justice and Mr. Clay. You know, exonerated uh, and 
compensated to the tune of one million um, because he sued for compensation and the Commonwealth, as they called it, was willing to pay the full million that was available. The um, <laughs> That works out, it's obviously 26,000 per year for the 38 years that he did. Um, his attorney quoted as saying that the law worked the way it's supposed to. And that they had wanted, that, sorry, they had waited till June of the previous year because the, um, sorry, to file their suit because state law changed. So the limit changed from $500,000 to a million. So they waited till then to file their suit and claim the one million. However, November of just last year, 2020, same, same newspaper, different writer, again to do with Frederick Clay. Boston will pay a further 3.1 million to Frederick Clay which brings the total in 10 years, 53 cases, 10 years to 15 million. Now, interestingly enough, Frederick Clay's is not the largest settlement. It's not the highest amount. Back in 2014, a Sean Drumgold received 5 million. But what makes Frederick Clay's settlement particularly important and makes it stand out is that it's the only payment so far not to come as the result of a lawsuit. The police department settled. They finalised the settlement just six, six weeks after the death of George Floyd. As another lawyer of uh, Fred Clay pointed out, and a, a, um, a lady called Emma Freudenberger, quote, cities are beginning to realise the massive financial risk of taking cases of police mus misconduct to trial. That it's becoming ever clearer that juries recognise that wrongful convictions occur and that they occur due to police misconduct and they do untold damage. So as I say, that's a summarization, if you like, of three three articles um, in in the space of three years, in over three years, to do with Frederick Clay, um, released at the age of 23 back in 2017. As I say, he was paid one million straight away. Um, also in the articles was mentioned the fact that there's, there needs to be in place a process for helping these people once they're exonerated to, you know, immediate cash, a cash sum to help them out with housing, getting them used to the, to the world as it's changed. Um, but as I say, they, they, they cleverly, they waited um, till uh, January of 2019 they had waited until the uh, the law had changed so that he got from the five million sorry from the five hundred thousand the half a million he could get the full million. There was no argument about that. He fully deserved it. And then, without even filing a civil suit against the police department, they settle. They settle for three point one million because they realise just how damaging it could be if they wanted to take the case further. You know, the parallels to what Wisconsin should do in Stephen Brendan's cases are just so obvious. <laughs> One of my favourites, Kathleen Zeldin words, they're axiomatic, what the state should be doing at the moment with Stephen Brendan. Anyway, um, we'll catch you all again soon. 
Um, tomorrow, um, early evening for me, uh, I've got looking forward to a chat with um, the uh, blues, jazz, ragtime, guitar legend, Woody Man. And then, of course, another legend, um, Pete Dassey, in the, later on in the evening. That's going to be 12 o'clock um, Eastern time. So that's 11 o'clock Central time with Woody Man. And then, of course, 2 o'clock with Pete Dassey. So uh, catch you all again then. Cheers. Bye for now.